So getting into materials that we're going to use for insulation, the first one's fiberglass bats, and it is very commonly used. Um, I will say that people think of this as like an inferior product, and I think part of that is because it's so common, and then the other part of that is because it's been really poorly installed for a long time. Okay, and and. I'll just say this, this is the step where everybody wants to rush it and get it done as fast as possible because it's not the most fun in the world and it's itchy and dusty. And so there ends up being kind of a poorly done job and it's a, a real shame because then it gets covered up and never to be heard from again and it dramatically reduces the performance of your house if this is improperly done. Okay, so it's one of those things where, you know, we could blow it out in four hours and be done really quick. Or we could spend seven hours and have a really nice tight job, okay? And I think it's worth that extra little bit of time to have like a really nice tight job, okay? So I'll just say fiberglass, very, very effective if done correctly. Very cost effective also, okay? It's really good at slowing conductive thermal transfer, okay? Not so much convective transfer, okay? Like I said before, air will move right through this stuff, okay? It's made from molten glass, and I have a video up that you can watch. A lot of it is actually recycled glass also, but they melt the glass down and then it gets extruded into these fibers and then compressed into sheets and cut and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of eco-friendly in the sense that they're using recycled glass for it. The place where the energy intensive use comes from is going to be melting the glass. Okay heating everything up to a temperature that they're melting glass and then maintaining that heat so that they're moving molten glass around a factory, okay? And this stuff, you know, like most materials, it's going to create all these little air bubbles inside this material that's going to slow the conductive thermal transfer process, okay? And then most of these things have this paper face, okay? that's gonna act as a vapor retarder, all right? Not a vapor barrier, it's a class two vapor retarder. And so the instructions are always put this to the warm side of the house, okay? Or the, you know, the warm side. They don't necessarily say of the house. They say put it to the warm side. So if you're in an area where it's generally hotter outside, you're going to want this paper face to go towards the exterior, okay? In our area, we're trying to keep our house warm most of the time. The paper face is going to point towards the interior. And the idea is that vapor is going to want to move from the warm area to the colder area because there's more moisture in that warm air and it's trying to get out. So we're trying to slow any vapor transfer that might occur with this material. Okay. And then the, the real trick with this stuff is, like I said before about the engineer Joyce, we need to completely fill that cavity. Okay. If we have an odd sized bay, we're supposed to cut it and fit it. Okay. If we're cutting around electrical boxes or there's a pipe in the way or blocking, we need to cut around it so that the back of this insulation bat is touching the sheathing, the sides of the bat are touching the framing. Okay, we're not supposed to have voids and pockets behind it because that's a place where air can move around, that's a place where air can condense on surfaces. Okay, this stuff has a huge range of R value and it's all based on the thickness. Okay, R11. R you don't really find much anymore, but that was that was the original two by four 
wall thickness insulation. Okay. And then they just kept making it better. And now they have for two by four walls, R15 is the minimum. Okay. And so you don't see a whole lot of R11 anymore, but they had this up to R49. Okay. It's a really big, thick 12 inch bats of insulation that you would use for like a ceiling or something like that. So installing this stuff, it's going to come in bags and they're compressed into the bags, which you'll see in that video. You're going to cut the bag open and the stuff's going to kind of pop out of the bag. All right. And it's really nice because this stuff is pre-cut to fit into standard framing bays. Okay. So you can go to the hardware store and you can say, I need a bag of R21, 16 inch on center or 24 inch on center. Okay. Depending on whatever your framing is, these bats are pre-cut to fit that. Okay. They go right in and you'll staple them to the sides. Okay, so this is a place where advanced framing techniques could save you a lot of time on insulation. Okay, if you plan out your framing so that most of your bays are just 24 inches instead of oddly sized bays, the insulation is going to go a lot quicker, it's going to be a lot easier, it's going to be a lot more effective. Okay. I'm not advocating that everyone should plan their framing out around the insulation, but it certainly is nice when you can just grab a piece of insulation and it fits right in the stud bay. Okay. Like I said before, we're going to put that paper face towards the warm side or in our, case, in our situation, the condition side of the house. This is a big, where to staple the, Paper is kind of a big um, debate. There's a little flap, a paper flap on the side of those bats that you fold out. And you will have some people say that you have to staple it to the face of the stud. Okay, I will admit that that is going to pull it tighter up against the studs and make for a tighter insulation, okay? There's a trade-off though, and that trade-off is gonna be the drywallers are gonna be very angry at you if you staple all the paper to the face of the stud, okay? And the reason is it's difficult for them to see where the studs are when they're trying to hang their drywall. It can also, if it's all lumpy and there's 10 million nails in it, it can make it difficult to screw the ply, uh, excuse me, drywall down flat, and you can create all these little bumps and humps in the wall. Okay, it is totally fine to just staple it to the side of the studs so that the face of that stud is visible. Okay, I think part of the argument on this stapling the paper to the face of the studs stems from the fact that. They're trying to achieve this really tight vapor retarder by having like a continuous vapor retarder across the face of the stud. Okay, but remember, in our climate zone, all we need for our vapor retarder is a class three vapor retarder, and that's primed latex primed drywall. Okay, as long as we drywall this thing and prime it with a latex primer, that's it. That's our vapor retarder. We don't need to have this continuous tight vapor retarder with the paper face. Okay. So if we're cutting insulation, which we're probably going to end up cutting them at some point, just because we're going to have some odd sized bays, I like to measure the bay and I like to cut the bat so that it's an inch wider. Okay, just so that there's a little bit of compression against those studs. We don't want too much. We don't want to be forcing it in and overly compressing it, but we want it to just fit snugly inside those bays. Okay. If we cut it too narrow and there's a bunch of gaps everywhere, that's ineffective. Okay. Again, we need to completely fill that bay. All right. And we need to do a really careful job of cutting around all the electrical boxes and all the pipes. And this is something that I see get really sloppy. Um, 
people just stuff the bat in and just kind of fold it around the electrical boxes. But then there's big gaps around the electrical boxes and the insulation's not fitting tight against the stud, not fitting tight against the back. You actually have to cut it, notch around the box. It doesn't take that much time and it looks so much nicer and it goes in so much easier. Same thing with wires. If there's wires running through the stud bay, people like to just roll the insulation in behind the wire, but you should actually notch the back of the bat out so that it fits snugly around that wire so that it's contacting the sheathing. Okay, same thing with pipes, notch it around.